Good evening. Welcome to the Township of Abington's Board of Commissioners meeting for Janu January the 11th, 2018. And may we have a roll call, please. Here. 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 Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. At this time, I have two announcements to make. The first one is in honor of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial Service and adoption of resolution number 18-004. Whereas Martin Luther King Jr. was a man committed to peaceful coexistence where all men would be free from racism, bigotry, and discrimination. And whereas many people look to the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. as a source of inspiration for promoting harmony, cooperation, and understanding, and whereas the third Monday in January has been declared a national holiday, and on that day, January 15, 2018, Abington Township will conduct a memorial service at 12 noon, which will be attended by civic, religious, school, and government leaders and whereas a citizen of Abington Township will be honored as the 33rd annual recipient of the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial Award. Now, therefore, the Board of Commissioners of Abington Township does hereby proclaim January the 15th, 2018 as Martin Luther King Day and encourages all interested, interested citizens to participate in the Township Memorial Service resolved this 11th day of January 2018 Respectfully, the Board of Commissioners of Abington Township. Thank you. I have another announcement to make at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, on the agenda this evening is considering the request by BET <coughs> Investments for a text amendment, amendment to the zoning ordinance. Along with this text amendment request is a request to amend the zoning map as well. Before we begin tonight's meeting and before Mr. Cool, who was representing BET Investments, begins their presentation later on in the agenda, I will address why this matter is on our agenda this evening. The Pennsylvania, municipally, the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code and the Township Abington of Abington Zoning Ordinance provides that consideration of amendments to the Township Zoning Code as we have before us this evening are allowed at the sole legislative discretion of the Board of Commissioners. <clears throat> Thus, tonight we are seeking limited information from the applicant so that the Board can determine whether they will consider this request and begin the public process of reviewing the proposed text amendment and map change. This necessarily takes place prior to this Board of Commissioners formally authorizing any ordinance to be advertised and in the interest of assuring that the public's opportunity to participate in the decision-making pro process is maximized and to assure that the myriad of details inherent to a proposal such as this are thoroughly reviewed all of which will occur subsequent to tonight's representation should the board decide to proceed this evening. So with that, we'll move into our formal agenda. First, I'd like to call on Chief John Livingood, our Chief of Police, followed by Commissioner Carol Gillespie for presentations. Thank you, uh, President Luker. Every single day that there's school in Abington Township, there's 27 dedicated individuals to help keep our children safe. Um, tonight we're going to tell you a story about one of those 27. Um, Bobby Lawfer, um, Barbara actually, she likes to be called Bobby, started her career as a crossing guard in May of 1976. 
She stood at the corner of Penn Avenue and Jenkintown Road, excuse me, and crossed the children there. She was faithful, she was dedicated, she was loyal. She was out there, her greatest concern was for the safety of those children. Um, Bobby served for 40 years. This last May, when she finished her assignment over there, she went food shopping and tragically had an auto accident she did not survive from. So tonight I'd like to call up, first of all, uh, Mary Carminati. And I'd like to call up the family of Bobby Walker. Her husband, Frederick Fritz. Her sons, Robert and Rick, and their children, and her sister, Janet, right here, and her best friend, Heidi Marks, who you may know is a graduate employee. She's been her best friend. So Mary Carminati, as you know, is a supervisor of our crossing guard. She makes sure these, um, these people are out there on duty all the time, well uniformed, well prepared, well equipped, and ready to go. <coughs> and um, so tonight we have a presentation that we're going to give to the family of um, Bobby. Presented to the family of Barbara Lawford in recognition of her 40 years of dedicated service to the children of Abington. And this was taken last year on Crossing Guard Appreciation Day, which this year is February 14th. Thank you, friends. Anything else you'd like to say, sir? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bobby is a uh, proud resident of um, Commissioner Gillespie's ward, and uh, the post that she stood at Penn Avenue and um, Jagatown Road for those 40 years um, splits Commissioner Zappone's ward and Commissioner Thompson's ward. And um, so she has proudly served the residents of Abington Township, but her primary concern was for the safety of our children. So for that, we applaud her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Livingood. At this time, we normally announce public comment on agenda items. However, we did not have committee meetings in January. Therefore, public comment will be allowed after each agenda item this evening. So at this time, I'd like to call on Vice President Stephen Klein for one, approval of the minutes, and also for the appointments of specific boards, commissions, and positions that are before us. Uh, first, we'd like to take a brief intermission while some of our participants leave the, the room. Thank you. There are no agendas out there again. There were no agendas when we came. So, and I, uh, um, if somebody would check the agendas, and they're going to do that now. Um, and also, um, if they can bring in more chairs, because we seem to regularly have people in the hall, and yet we have all this space that I think if we rearranged for more chairs would work. And, and also, I had a question about what you said prior, just a, a minute ago, and I would like to ask that now rather than... Um, because I have other discussion for that particular item. No, wait till the okay. agenda item in which you want to speak comes up, and then you can speak but, according. But what you did, you carefully worded it and still did not say. You said this would be done before it was advertised. Are they asking this yes for a hearing or no, not? No, wait till that time comes. Please sit well, down. Well, you did and just explain it, but you missed that. Let the agenda play out like we formulated it. Thank you. Okay, as I said previously, I'll call on Vice President Stephen Klein for approval of the minutes and also of the, for the appointments of our specific boards, commissions, and positions that are open. Thank you, President Luker. I'd like to first um, offer a motion to approve the Board of Commissioners special meeting of December 14th, 2017, adopting the 2018 final budget and the December 14th, 2017 regular scheduled Board of Commissioners meeting, and I so move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Then I would like to make a motion to um, a motion to approve resolution number 18005, appointing the deputy tax collector as Carol Thrasher. 
Second. So moved and second it. Comments from commissioners, staff. Hearing none, all those in favor? I'm sorry. Aye. Residents? Yes. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. So we're appointing a deputy commissioner, and I'm assuming, uh, or a deputy tax collector um, and treasurer, but I'm assuming that's because Mr. Blumenthal will therefore not be there at the job. In other words, that she can then take over uh, at that point. That has been one of the chief complaints that I have through three different managers uh, at this point discuss the fact that the finances of the tax office are written in gobbledygook so they cannot actually be parsed. When I made a chart so that they could easily be parsed, I was refused the information to, that was needed to fill that chart. And then the next year, the duties of the tax collector were all different so that other fees and so on were in there so the chart was no longer valid. Instead of accommodating a request that shows that the, the um, income from the tax office cannot properly be charted so that you can compare what this tax collector is charging you versus what another tax collector might charge you. When you make it that way, there is no way, there's no way to compare it. And you have a fiduciary duty to, to the residents in this township to manage their money properly. And I would hope that hearing this should be inspiration enough for you to work with the residents that would like to get that corrected and to have some improvement on that. So if, for instance, there are five or six people working in the tax office, the collector might not have to do anything. And if you now deputize somebody who can come in his place and perhaps he doesn't even have to come to meetings. So those are things that have a lot to do with how taxpayers are being charged. So I would urge you, please, to work with me to get that changed. And I would urge against this appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments from the public? May I make a comment? Not now. Not now? No, thank okay. you. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And President Luker, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, resolution number 18006, appointing the treasurer and deputy treasurer as uh, Jay Blumenthal and Carol Thrasher. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Staff? Wait, I, I have a question. Commissioner Myers. Um, this, the, the way this is being presented, it makes it look like that this is a new appointment for Carol Thr Thrasher. And it, it is not. And Carol has worked in the tax office for how many years? Twelve. And you've, and you've been deputy tax collector and deputy treasurer for how many years? 2010. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And the last appointment, Commissioner uh, President Luker, is the appointment of our township engineer for Mike Powers as interim until a successor is appointed, and I so move. Second. So moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners, staff, residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. That concludes the appointments and the meeting minutes. Thank you, Vice President Stephen Klein. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Tom Hecker, Director of Public Works. Thank you, President Luker. The Public Works Committee has one item of business this evening. This is PW1, and it is a motion to adopt resolution number 18-008, accepting and approving the right-of-way plans for the Edge Hill Road Tyson Avenue flood control reconstruction project, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Commissioner Klein. I don't know if this is appropriate at this time, but it's related to the Edge Hill Tyson. Um, where are we at? Where are we with the um, eminent domain um, properties? Have we gotten a progress report on those? And I'm sure that Commissioner Zappone of Gillespie will correct me if I'm incorrect, but I believe we have 100 percent signatures. That's great. Wow. Excellent. Great. 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 Thank you. Yes. Good stuff. Good job. 
I'm done. Okay, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Any comments from residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. Thank you, President Luker. That concludes the business of the Public Works Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Hecker. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ben Sanchez, Director of Code Enforcement Land Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we have one item. Uh, this would be the aforementioned motion to consider a text amendment to the zoning ordinance uh, request by BET Investments. And I believe that, uh, as you said, the applicant is here and intends to make a uh, brief presentation. Counsel for the applicant. May I, Mr. Chairman? How are you, sir? Good evening. My name is Joe Cools, as was stated at the start of the meeting, and I'm here this evening on behalf of BET Investments. Uh, as you know, BET made an application for a zoning ordinance amendment, which you described at the commencement of the hearing, relative to a five-acre parcel near the corner of Old York and Susquehanna Roads. Most of you know it as the YMCA property and the Helwig and Rowland funeral home. The proposal is to develop the property for senior apartments. The rezone application we've submitted, as you described, is both a request for a change to your map and a request for modifications to the text of the regulations applicable in the AO apartment office district. With me this evening is Mr. Pete Clellan. Pete is a professional engineer and he's the director of development for BET. Pete's here to briefly describe the project for you and to answer any questions you may have. But before he does, I just want to restate what you already stated, Mr. Chairman, quite eloquently, which is why we're here this evening. Uh, we're not asking for any formal action from this board. We're not asking for any approval. We're not asking for any authorization to advertise. We're here in the interest of complete transparency to make a public appearance announcing to the community that this process is just starting and to make them aware of all the opportunities they'll have to provide feedback, which I'll go through in just a moment. We're also here right at the start to publicly ask the board to please accept and process the application. As you mentioned, we're very aware that unlike a building permit application, unlike a zoning hearing board application, unlike even a land development application, you're under no obligation to hear a request for a rezone at all. There's no deemed approval process applicable. So we're here this evening again with complete transparency to ask you to please allow the application to simply move forward, that you allow staff to schedule us for your public planning commission meeting that's occurring, I believe, on January 23rd. And we'll appear there and there'll be ample opportunity to explore the proposal and to accept feedback from the community. Let us go, please, to your code committee meeting on January 31st and we'll make another presentation and there'll be, again, ample opportunity to explore the proposal and allow the community to weigh in with their concerns and to respond to those concerns. Then and only then would we return to you with an ordinance that had been vetted through that entire process to your meeting one month from now on February 8th, and then hopefully if things go as we hope they will go, we'll be asking you on February 8th to authorize advertisement of those two ordinances I described. One, proposing an amendment to the map, and two, proposing amendments to the text of the regulations applicable in the apartment office district. So that's really it in a nutshell. We're at the beginning. We're at the beginning of the beginning. And as I said, we're here just to describe the process, let people know they're going to have an opportunity to be heard, and ask you to please just accept the application and send it on. So unless you have any questions for me about what I just said, I'll just turn it over to Mr. Clellan and have him describe the proposal briefly for you, please. Did any commissioners have any questions at this point? Proceed, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Clellan. Thank you. Good evening. As Joe mentioned, my name is Peter Cleland. I'm a professional engineer and the director of development for BET Investments. And we have a brief presentation here with some images, some slides, some information about uh, what we would propose to do should this amendment move forward. Uh, this is an introductory page with a background image here of uh, some renderings of the building. And before I get into too many of the details, I just wanted to talk about this type of project, this age-restricted apartment complex. Uh, we have another property locally here in Upper Dublin Township that we developed back in the mid-2000s, which is now fully occupied. 
uh, it's 192 age restricted units on uh, property there. It's a very popular uh, property in the area. We have a, a lengthy waiting list of people waiting to get into that property. In fact, if you came to sign up now, it would take you about a year before you could even get an apartment uh, in that property. We have functions at the property, parties, yoga, uh, events where they get a bus chartered and go to different places. And um, it's very popular with that demographic. So we have a few things here to show you. Again, project description, then we'll go over a quick tax revenue impact sheet and some traffic data that we've generated for the possible redevelopment of the property. So the property in question, I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit, is as Joe mentioned, everybody knows the YMCA, Susquehanna and Old York Road, and then also the Hellweg Funeral Home, uh, which is adjacent to the YMCA along Old York Road. We have frontage on both of those streets. We will take access to both of those streets. Actually, I think I have it on here. Old York Road, the left side of the page, Susquehanna at the top. Sunrise Assisted Living is up here. Uh, Abington Hospital, of course, is off the page to the top. So the proposed zoning would rezone the property. It currently exists as a split zoning between community service and R3 to an AO apartment office district. Uh, in a conjunction with that, we would propose some amendments to the AO district to allow this specific use at this uh, location. We, based on the rents that we achieve at our other property, we expect that our rents here would be north of $2,000 a month. Uh, we are proposing only one and two bedroom units. And of course, with the age restricted, you get no children out of this to impact the school district. So the site plan, back to this, again, Old York Road here. In the blue is the general outline of the superstructure of the building. That would be the residential units. And then you'll see these areas, they're named amenity deck, pool deck, and amenity deck. And these are raised areas above there's parking beneath the entire structure, so it's all fully enclosed parking. And above that parking is a deck upon which we would locate the pool and other outdoor amenities, garden areas, seating areas, grilling areas, those kinds of things. Uh, driveway on Old York Road, of course, York Road is divided, so this would be a right in, right out driveway. It goes underneath the building proceeds back we have a fire access lane here and then again underneath the building this driveway on susquehanna would be a right in left in right out driveway there would be no left turns at that location and then another driveway here further away from the intersection that would be full access and that goes directly underneath into that parking deck so there's lots of areas for uh, greenery on these decks besides the peripher peripheral buffering that's available around the property. So this is a, an image that our architect has put together based on the footprint of the building. This would be along Susquehanna Road. Um, we're proposing wide sidewalks along Susquehanna Road with landscaping up against the building, entrances at the street level. And then you start to notice we have some patios, decks, and setbacks of the building. As you get taller, it sets back from the lower levels to help break up some of the mass of the building. This is an, a view that we've generated looking from the intersection of Old York Road and Susquehanna through the cemetery that exists on the corner. Again, you can start to see some of these setbacks of the building at the upper levels to create these deck and patio areas that uh, residents can enjoy. Another view along Susquehanna, a little bit further away. This end of the building, this would basically be if we were standing in the front yard of uh, Sunrise looking across. So as you, as the building goes towards um, the fairway, it gets lower. We have 
a step down at the top level, another step down at the next level, and then this is that amenity deck that I was discussing earlier. Overneath, this is all the underground parking here, which obviously doesn't look like underground parking. This is the entrance that I talked about. Along York Road, similar treatment where we step the building back as we transition away at the edges of the property. And this would be the entrance there along Old York Road. Uh, this, this image shows it divided. That is, uh, we would propose to uh, create an emergency access break there, but not for, uh, not for residents to use to turn in for that direction. So this is an example of what the amenity deck and pool deck might look like. These areas are actually built up above um, the concrete below with uh, about two feet of soil and plant mixture. It, it operates both for stormwater purposes and obviously just as a, a nice amenity to green up the property and uh, make it very enjoyable for people to have parties and whatnot. Um, during their daytime hours out on the operate on the deck. Another view of the amenity space, and then we start to get into some examples of the interior finishes. This is going to be a very high end. Uh, as I mentioned, the rents are going to be north of $2,000 a month, and the expectation at that point is that you have very high end finishes, lots of amenity spaces in the building for people to gather, and you know they they play cards, they have book groups, and those kind of things. Some of the two-story lobby areas that you get in this kind of uh, setup. Some of the outdoor amenity spaces. We have fire pits uh, along with the pool aforementioned. You can see the grill area in the background. Uh, we'll also have an interior uh, exercise facility, an exercise room, both for cardiovascular stuff as well as yoga and other exercise programs. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll get into uh, some of the tax benefits of this type of development. As I'm sure you've all heard, uh, age-restricted housing does have the benefit of generating taxes for the township and the school district, and particularly the school district benefits by the fact that these revenues are generated without any impact of students putting into the school district. Uh, we had our consultant take a look at this property in particular under the proposed development as well as look at the township uh, statistics and has determined that the school district would benefit to the tune of about seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year the township itself about one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year for a grand total of about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year of a tax benefit traffic is generally a large concern with any type of development because this is not a new development the YMCA obviously operates there and as a result of their use is, is fairly intense on the property and the nature of the age restricted housing is obviously a much lower traffic generator and even at the numbers that we're talking about for this property of 225 units uh, you can still see here and these are based on actual counts we went and counted the actual traffic at the what this YMCA they're not they're not theoretical values for the YMCA. These are the actual counts of the driveways. You would see a reduction on a daily basis of 361 trips, and, during, and most of those reductions occur in the peak hours, which means that the YMCA is very heavy on the peak hour trips. You have it's 186 fewer trips in the weekday morning and 168 fewer trips in the weekday afternoons. So that concludes the information that we prepared for you tonight. And then if you guys have any questions, we'd be happy to try to address them to the, to the extent that we can. Okay. Any questions of the applicant? Commissioner um, Speaker. Yeah, I'm going to ha have various questions as we move forward. But um, you mentioned in the, uh, the uh, amenity, in your discussion, the amenity deck, um, stormwater management. What uh, could you give us a an overview of, of the stormwater management plan for, for the entire site? I, guess, I mean, really, the sites? Yeah, I mean, we obviously have not gone to that level of detail to design the entire, uh, but we have not done that level of engineering on it. The anticipation is that there will be underground storage. Oops. Um, there will be some sort of underground storage in probably in this area of the building below the parking garage. 
and then also down at this end of the building. The, natu the site has kind of two natural divides from a topographic standpoint. It drains off this way and then off this way. Um, so there's two locations where we'll intend to have underground detention structures within the footprint of the building and then and then from a water quality standpoint those roof decks will be used for for water quality purposes okay um, that's all I, I, that's all I have for, uh, uh, for the engineering perspective for now but I've Commissioner Vahey. Sir, you're asking for both a map amendment and a text amendment um, I note that Rydal Park is in an AO district can you explain to me why you can't make this project work with an existing permissible uses of an AO district? Um, I, I think the Bridal Park, I think the, the existing district, the uses that are allowed in the existing district are for uh, life care facilities and that sort of thing. While this is age restricted, we are not, we are not providing, um, assisted living type facilities at this project? Well, let me be pr more precise. Um, your presentation actually talks about density. So I assume you need this to in increase density on the existing AO district, correct? Correct. Why can't you make this work with less density? Uh, there are f fiscal reasons. purchase price of the YMCA property in terms of um, and, and I did, the density that we're asking for in the ordinance is in keeping with a lot of apartment type properties of, of modern uh, design they're taller they're um, they're more compact more, um, more ur suburban, semi-urban infill type properties. Okay. I understand we're moving to advance this towards more hearings, but mm -hmm. this is an issue I'm very interested in, and just a blanket description of more density doesn't do anything for, any, anything for me, so I'm going to need more information about this before I could, you know, make a final vote. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Commissioner Sanchez. This, uh, Maybe a question for Mr. Cools. Um, two questions, actually. On the, I understand Commissioner Vahey's question about the zone, the AO zoning. Could you talk a little bit about the zoning that's there currently, and what that might allow in the, you know, in the current configuration? Obviously, we have a uh, situation here with a unique use in place, the YMCA, and to be clear, now I'm drifting into a comment, not a question, but the the YMCA. YMCA is no more, um, you know, th they'll be leaving, they're selling the property, this isn't, you know, there's not a likely replacement for that. Are there other uses that you investigated that would fit into the current? Well, part of the analysis you're going to see presented to both the Planning Commission on <coughs> January 23rd and to your Code Committee on January 31st, and much of the data which will be presented through sworn testimony and expert land planners, expert uh, traffic engineers and uh, the gentleman who prepared the economic analysis is precisely the impact upon this property, not only through the use which is existing and which would be allowed to continue, but comparing any number of other permitted uses under the AO district with the proposal. And we're confident that we're going to be able to establish for you that the impact on the community, both from a traffic perspective and a fiscal perspective and an aesthetic perspective and any other you know, any other considerations that come up are going to be far favorable under the proposal than compared to what is out there today continuing or any of the other permitted uses in the AO district. Now clearly there's going to be an increase in density being proposed but there's also an age restriction component of this that I don't believe is present right now as just one example in the AO apartment office district which justifies the entire project. I mean obviously that David Babbitt analysis that we threw up to just show you as a little snapshot of is strictly based upon the fact that it is an age-restricted community. We're proposing a use here in the apartment office district, the senior apartment housing, which is not even a permitted use currently in the, in the AO district. And we're prepared to go into all those issues with you again through the Planning Commission, through your code committee, and through sworn testimony in a hearing which we're hopeful may occur two months from now in March 
We certainly understand the considerations and you've made it very clear, Commissioner, that you need more information on that topic before you're ever in a position to even consider voting favorably upon the project and we understand that and we're prepared to present the information. We're only asking you tonight to let us go through that process, to let us begin that process, to please let staff schedule us for January 23 at your planning commission, schedule us for January 31 at your code committee. Only then will we have an ordinance vetted through those committees that we would then ask you to advertise on February 8 for a hearing on March 8. So all these issues are gonna be discussed and there may be some modifications through that process before we ever get back to you a month from now asking you to advertise anything. And that dovetails nicely with my second question, which was as if we were to invoke what I've been calling the public process, the going to the planning commission, uh, the going uh, to the code committee, and then on for an advertisement for possibly a future hearing. Before that, you would be willing to sit down with the neighbors and in a forum. I, we could host a meeting here if need be or you know whatever room was sizable so that we could hopefully vet and discuss these uh all these concerns in a you know a possibly a forum that's more conducive to question and answer than maybe here this evening absolutely in addition to the meetings i described which i pointed out are all public meetings will all be advertised the neighbors will all receive notice of those meetings we will not only make ourselves available all the time, but we'll establish some actual times outside the context of formal township meetings that we have the experts there and we have the ability to sit down with the neighbors and listen to their concerns and respond to them and get them answers in a way that's a little more conducive than a room full of people. I thank you for that. Commissioner Klein. Well, um, what consideration did your design team or your professional team put into um, looking at the recently adopted comprehensive zoning ordinance that we passed back in April or May of last year? Our planner isn't here with us this evening, but our planner was charged <coughs> with drafting an ordinance to effectuate the proposal. I'm sorry, and who did you say the planner was? I didn't hear the something. Planner was, the planner is John Kennedy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, John Kennedy is our planner. He's not here with us this evening because of the nature of this meeting. Well, obviously he'll be there at the planning commission with us and obviously he'll be there at the code committee with us and the charge to him was to draft an ordinance consistent with your comprehensive plan he's reviewed the plan he's reviewed your ordinance obviously you have a new ordinance we've taken all that into consideration when arriving at the changes that we needed in order to effectuate the proposal any other questions <clears throat> Commissioner Hecker. Yes, thank you, President Looker. So I think just to be clear for us and those who are here listening and on TV, so we're introducing a concept tonight about which we all will require additional information to make a determination about whether this is something we want to see proceed. And um, if that doesn't happen after tonight, then they wouldn't have access to the uh, planning commission and the zoning hearing board where additional information will be generated about this project so really all we're all we're asking or all they're asking for tonight was to be allowed to move through the township process am i correct about that yes okay yeah yeah i mean i don't want to be at all glib about this but it's almost the equivalent of handing the zoning hearing board application to the person working behind the counter i mean the only difference is that you're not obligated to take this application as compared to a zoning hearing board application as i said I mean, if I were to show up at the township building on a Wednesday afternoon with a zoning hearing board application, you just take it and process it, because you have to. If you don't act on it, there's a deemed approval in 90 days. Mm -hmm. What is it, 60 days. Same thing for a land development application. It's only because this is a rezone application and there's no obligation to hear it at all that we're here this evening. I can tell you that I've been doing this for 27 years throughout Montgomery and Bucks County, and there's an awful lot of townships who just have the manager schedule a hearing. Because the advertising of the hearing is two or three hundred dollars, it's well within his capacity as a manager to just administratively write a check for that amount and schedule a hearing. Mm -hmm. And um, it happens all the time. In fact, the vast majority of the times I've done this, that's the way it happens. Mm -hmm. This isn't. This is extraordinary. We're, we're, we're here tonight to make a public announcement about the fact that nothing is happening behind the scenes on this. Nothing is happening without the public being fully aware of it. We are essentially tonight handing up an application to this board and saying please take this. That's all that's happened. And we will then hopefully show up at a planning commission, show up at a code committee meeting, and then come back before you a month from now. And make no mistake, a month from now, we will be asking for the first time 
that you take the ordinance that was a result of those meetings and, and neighbors meetings and please advertise it for us for a hearing on March 8th. But that's certainly, we are at the beginning of the beginning mm -hmm. of this process this evening. Okay. Commissioner Spiegel. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, a number of commissioners, including commissioners uh, Fahey and, and Sanchez and Hecker, sort of presaged some of my questions for you, uh, Mr. Coles. But um, I mean, ultimately, uh, I guess uh, my, it's not so much a question but a comment. Like, given the approach, I think, of, of the current board, of Commissioner Sanchez, of myself, because, I mean, while, while this development is located entirely in, in Ward 7, is right across the street from Ward 11, the ward that I represent, um, you should you know, prepare yourself uh, accordingly for uh, very rigorous meetings. Uh, I mean, certainly, obviously, there, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a process of the public meetings, uh, as you said, the, the planning commission, et cetera. But uh, as far as the meetings, the meetings with the neighbors, neighbors who will be the nearby neighbors in Ward 7 and some folks over from the side of the street where, where I live, um, who are going to, there, there's a lot of information that's going to be uh, expected. I mean, certainly, uh, I know one thing that I'd like to hear is, uh, this is a universal question for any text amendment, is, um, you know, a comprehensive understanding of what other areas of Abington Township could be affected if, this, if the text amendment goes through. Um, uh, another question specific to the, the text amendment, and this, is, this closely relates to the, the density question that Commissioner Vehi asked, uh, uh, basically how close, how close uh, would you have been trying to stay within the existing density of the, of the, current, uh, the current AO district um, and using, you know, using various, uh, you know, give and takes of, of buffers and other offsets to increase density. How, how close could you have gotten to your desired density uh, without asking for, without asking for uh, the text, without asking for the density uh, provisions in the text amendment, um, and uh, I think also, I mean, the neighbors, uh, the neighbors that I've spoken to on on both sides of the street, and that Commissioner Sanchez has spoken to, um, I mean, they, you know, they're they're going to have a they're going to have a boatload of questions, and I think one of the things they're going to want to know is what they're what they're going to be looking at. Um, I mean, th when you live, when you live, this is, this is very different, obviously. This is very different from the why. It's very different from the, the Helwig uh, funeral home, but particularly, particularly from the why. Um, people, people are going to want to know what, what day-to-day -day life is going to be like with this as a neighbor. Sure. And it's a, lot, it's a lot to ask. As you said, in many townships, this, is all, this, this, would, be, this would be de rigueur. This would this ba basically be a rubber stamp process. But we are not believers in rubber stamps or done deals uh, at all. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing out a lot of random questions you wouldn't necessarily be able to answer tonight, but these, you can expect those questions uh, from many different sources and many, many more. So, sure. we, we, prepare we, yourself, I mean, prepare yourself accordingly. Yeah. We, we do expect those questions, and, and they're all good questions. And certainly, what we're, what's being proposed is very different than what's out there now. The questions aren't much different, however, than the questions that come up in most rezonings. You want to know why it's necessary. You want to know how it's going to impact the community. You want to know exactly what it means. What other, what other properties might be impacted by this? What properties are zoned AO? What properties still remain for potential development? What properties might be converted under the AO? And how will these types of changes in the regulations affect those properties. These are all the questions that always come up. I mean, there's, there's always a few that we don't think of, certainly, but we're going to hear them. You we're going to hear them from the neighbors. The and we're, we're going to hear them from you. And, uh, and certainly, I, you know, I didn't mean to imply that anywhere a rezoning is a rubber stamp. It never is. All, all, I, all I meant to say and all I tried to say was that appearing at a meeting like this before the process even starts is, is quite a commitment to a transparent process. It, and and it's, I know it's important to you. We know, we know it's important to you and it's, and it's important to us. And we will sit with the neighbors. We will sit with the neighbors in organized meetings and we will answer calls from the neighbors when they make them to give them as much information as possible. And we're gonna, we're gonna be able to calm the concerns of a lot of people and we're never gonna calm the concerns of some people as you are all well aware. And we're hopeful that we're going to be able to answer all your questions and, and satisfy your concerns to the extent that you feel it's appropriate and you're comfortable with implementing the ordinance that we put on the table. 
and it, 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 just for the record, it is appreciated. Don't, I don't. I mean, I don't want. I don't want that to go unsaid. It is, your presence here is definitely uh, legitimately appreciated. I will throw one more thing on your knock list, sure. uh, which is a which is sort of a night. You know, a nice clean cheat sheet for all of us commissioners and and the neighbors and the township staff and anyone else who wants to see it. Um, uh, a simple synopsis of the differences between AO as it currently exists and AO uh, with the proposed new uh, uh, age rest senior housing uh, use at, uh, adopted if that text amendment were to be adopted. Sure, I, I can tell you that you know one of the things we've done understanding that that would be something that everybody would be interested in right from the start is we didn't do it a lot of planners and attorneys do, which is just hand you something that you have to sit down with the two pieces and try to fit it together. I think we actually have a red line that we submitted to you that shows precisely right. how things are how things are being proposed to be changed. So but we'll go over all those details, you know. I need even times, it, I need times. even simpler. I, I need I need like we'll get it we'll get it as crayon drawings. We'll get it as simple as you need it. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Clark, yeah. So um just to comments on a couple things so commissioner Hacker brought up we do have a sketch plan process that you could go through before going through any of this to get some feedback from the planning commission primarily set up for just such an occasion so that is one one opportunity to do this before you go into any kind of formal process of the vetting formal vetting process that would that a uh, an advertising of the ordinance would require um, being one of the people heavily involved in the zoning rewrite that was that con concluded last year um, I, I do have some of the same concerns that have been talked about. I mean, the density in this ordinance that's being proposed is nothing close to what has been contemplated in anywhere in the ordinance. Um, building heights in properties such as this, uh, impervious coverages, um, setbacks. I mean, I, you know, I realize that you may have looked at things. I just don't understand where they're where they're connected in some of the thought process that was put into you know the close to seven eight year process of rewriting our zoning ordinance um, and being one person who um, put a lot of time into it I've, i have trouble going on and looking into an ordinance that's going to be such a drastic change to anything contemplated in our current ordinance that we just adopted so i have do do have some deep concerns about the proposal and its lack of continuity with what was discussed and what was vetted over that period of time okay any other comments from commissioners commissioner gillespie yeah this, this is just a comment and i really don't know enough about this to even but i do want to say that i do know the dresher project really well i pass it all the time and just to hear that you have a waiting list i thought was interesting because as a realtor i'm always like oh isn't it a shame they don't they must have a lot of empty apartments there and here you have underground parking, which, you know, I'm finding out. And you have a waiting list. How many buildings are there? 10, 8, 10? 12. There's 12, 12, 12 buildings. <laughs> okay. It, it's just interesting, you know, that talking about density. And I, I, I don't think I see a car come out of there just about every time I ride by. Uh, I they're there. They're I, there. I will offer <laughs> most of the residents use the underground parking, yeah. and very few of it's them just, use this, the surface parking. Just it, that it, does, whole, it does look empty, but I assure yeah, it you does. it's not. I know, and that's what I'm saying. Like you're, when you're talking density, I'm thinking you probably won't even know these people are here because I pass that so often, and that was my thought. I thought these, these buildings aren't occupied. And here they are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're occupied. Uh, my mother's in one of them to be to be near her grandchildren. I live in Upper Dublin, not far away, and that, I can tell you, it's just changed the quality of her life. She was living on a five-acre parcel in Chester County, and she is active in, a, in an active community, and she has friends that she didn't have before. And uh, when she needs to go somewhere, I typically wind up picking her up. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't want to short circuit anything certainly and I know there's a number of residents I see and recognize and I'm sure they uh, want to comment um, I feel the same way with a lot of questions all the questions articulated by uh, various people this evening um, I would be inclined to invoke the process though so that we can vet this out hear from the planner I realize some of the questions are more appropriate for the planner um, probably there's more graphics I'm sure with the design team um, that would be coming um, and to also neighborhood meetings because uh, to, to give you insight from what I'm thinking I just 
I see this as something people, you know, it's big and people are going to have an immediate reaction to. Um, what I don't know are any alternatives. I realize you're bringing something to us that uh, you're presenting as, you know, your best alternative. Um, what I'm concerned with is what's allowed under existing zoning and uh, what are other things that may go there because I, for one, would, if I had to choose between a Wawa and something like this, I would prefer to go with something like this, you know, sight unseen. But so that's what I would like a deeper understanding and to understand that kind of stuff throughout the process, which I assume the planner would uh, that testimony sure. and the testimony of engineers and stuff. Ab abs absolutely, we we understand that a large part of this process is showing you alternatives and showing you what can be developed out there by right today and what would be permitted under the ordinances as if the map were to remain unchanged. We're, 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 we're very clear about that. And I didn't mean to pick on Wawa, but other retail uses or anything conceivable that might go in yeah. that. We're, we're just asking this evening that you take the application as submitted as a starting Understood. point. Yep, I understand. Rather Thank than for that. change the application before and, we even submit it to you. And Manager Manfredi, I believe, has a point, but I did want to, by matter of parliamentary procedure, should I motion that to continue and then we take comment from others or is that? I think once the commissioners have finished asking whatever questions you have and before you go into public comment, I think at the end of that, um, I don't know necessarily, it, it sounds to me like you're going to be voting this. It sounds to me like it's more giving me direction and, and consent to allow township administration staff to spend time in doing analysis and you know, assisting um, the planning commission and, and whatever uh, needs to be done to move it forward so you have information. So basically it would be uh, consent to direct me to allow that to move forward. I don't know that you need to vote if you're not going to be voting to advertise or, or taking any formal vote to move it forward. That's correct. I don't think any vote is, is strictly necessary. The board can indicate its consent to the manager to move forward and if there's any objection, obviously that could be um, voiced as well. There, 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 is a, there is a motion on the floor. It hasn't been seconded, but there is a motion on the floor. I actually right. didn't move it. Yeah, it, no. it wasn't actually okay. moved or seconded. Yeah. We're comfortable with the consensus. We're comfortable with the consensus to move forward and to schedule us on the planning commission and to authorize staff to assist us in, in presenting what we need to present. We, we have executed a professional services agreement with the township and we funded an escrow. So there won't be any expense to the township in that process, and you know we're, we're we're comfortable knowing that there's a majority of this board that's comfortable with us moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Commissioners Zappone. Yeah, I have a comment to make. Um, many of you know me; I'm very outspoken, but I, I like to get things, you know, out in the open with my chest. But yeah, I'm sitting here listening to all this, and it's like. Here comes another developer. It's what they want, they want, okay? Uh, I, I'm just at a point where developers come into our house, our house, we're all taxpayers, we all live in Abington here, okay? And they want us to change the laws that have been on our books for years and years and years just to benefit them. I have a major problem with that. The zoning rewrite, the zoning, re the zoning rewrite, took a long time. It was a lot of hard work to finalize. So that package was voted on. We approved it. Now here they come in the door. Well, we don't want that. We don't like that. Let's change. Let's make it our way because it's going to benefit us. No, why don't you benefit the residents of this township? Thank you. I'm a little sick and tired. Of <laughs> Commissioner Roth. Uh, I'd like to say that there's certainly parts of what uh, Commissioner's opponent just indicated that I agree with wholeheartedly. However, I'd be very hesitant for our board to ever, and I, I, there's going to be exceptions, so I may regret saying that, but not to gather more information. It, to me, it's the same thing as when we were uh, voting on whether we were going to uh, send out the RFI for uh, township engineer. That was something where I didn't think it would, I, I thought it would turn out the way it did, where we got information and said it will save taxpayer money to consider uh, staying the way we have it. But particularly with my experience uh, working as an attorney, for us to block 
hearing more information or allowing this to go through the process is, to me, a bit, little bit of a dangerous precedent. Now, some people here may have already decided that, you know what, this is, you know, way outside the boundaries of the zoning ordinance and may have even made up their minds. But I think that as a board, we need to allow this type of process to move forward, gather more information, have residents have the opportunity to speak with developers, to speak with us, and particularly with the commissioners in the wards where it's affected, and then move forward in the process. And by no means is that saying okay to the folks that are, are applying for the ordinance that I'm behind it. I, I need to have questions answered. I need to speak with my residents further. And it's by no means a comment to any of the residents here tonight that don't want this to move forward that I'm not on your side or will be. But our job here, at least the way I see it, is to get information as much as we can and at, ask and get answers to questions, and then make a decision on it that is best for our residents in our ward and the township as a whole. So that would be why I'm in favor of this moving forward, and it doesn't, if, for me or anybody else, bind us to any future decision or vote or how this might impact other parts of uh, Abington and the zoning, uh, the rewrite that was just done. So that, that's my take on it. I would uh, ask that we all consider uh, those thoughts and sentiments. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Myers and then Commissioner Rothman. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I agree with Commissioner Rothman. I would very much like to see more, I'd like to learn more. Um, I would certainly like to learn more about this, the density aspect of this, how it compares with some other developments, particularly uh, one that just was completed, Lionsgate, the Penn State project. Uh, I'd like to see those comparisons. And for another reason that I would like to hear more is that I truly believe in Abington Township there is a real lack of senior apartments, 55 and over apartments. And I'm, and I'm not saying an independent or assisted living facilities, I mean totally apartment, totally independent. Um, I think I, I would really like to learn more as being over 55 and over. <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Thompson. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming tonight and presenting this. Um, as we move forward, I just, I'm looking for some assurance from you guys that um, you're actually willing to work with the residents and the board and the planning commission moving through this process. Um, Commissioner Vahey kind of questioned you on the, the density issue earlier on. Um, question why the density of the development project is what it is um, and I believe the response was for fiscal reasons and I just want to make sure that fiscal reasons aren't going to hold up um, compromises with residents and with the township can you assure us that you will be willing to work certainly with us as we, we can forward? certainly assure you that we'll be willing to work with the commissioners and the residents mm -hmm. and the community absolutely thank you Look, questions. any other questions for commissioners Commissioner Bowman um, the place in Upper Dublin, is that apartments too or is that condos? Apartments also. It certainly looks a lot different from this. You'd grant me that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's far more bucolic than, than this. I don't know that I'd use the word bucolic, <laughs> but uh, it There's is There's green different. space between the buildings, correct? Is there? There's landscaped green there. space between all the buildings up there. It is a different product, yes. It w I can tell you that it was originally <laughs> conceived as condos and it was ultimately built as apartment rentals. And, and while I sympathize with my uh, commissioners that want more information, I mean, this is pretty detailed. Mm -hmm. It's right in front of you. It's a monstrosity on both fronts, Susquehanna and 611. <laughs> I mean, almost every, every piece of that footprint is, is building, high, giant building. So. I share Commissioner Klein's concerns. Thank you. Commissioner Shriver. So I, I've been I wasn't going to say anything. Um, I've been listening to all of my colleagues and agree with things on both sides. The density is a concern. Um, I'm wondering what is the process, because I do appreciate that you came forward and you're sort of at the very beginning and you're asking permission to go on, and I do appreciate that. But if we say no tonight, what is the process? If there was enough people, uh, the commissioners, but we want to 
can they go and make some changes and then come back a month later? You, you could, it is your prerogative because of it being a zoning request, amendment request, mm -hmm. to simply say we're not interested and that's it. That's one option. The second option is to consent to allowing it to go through a process that, as we described before, uh, another option is to take the request that they gave for the ordinance, advertise it, let that be the basis for all public discussion, or you could do any permutation of that. Would you agree? Absolutely. This is this falls purely under the board's legislative powers, and therefore. Um, Mr. Cools has made the application. The township does not have to move it forward. Um, it can move forward to and pr move through the process, and then when it comes time for advertising, the board can choose to advertise it or not. As Mr. Manfredi said, you can adver the board can authorize advertising in its current form and use that as the benchmark. And if there's changes made along the way, it would obviously need to be re-advertised should the board wish to consider it. But at the end, when, it com when push comes to shove, if the board is not interested in hearing this at all, the board can certainly decline to move this forward tonight. And if you, at any point, obviously, uh, even if you advertise a an ordinance, go through a process, go through a public vetting, authorize the advertising or had the public hearing, you can still reject the ordinance and say no. Because I have a lot of the same concerns, yeah, I think, as, as other people be, with the density and the way it looks and it, I would like to have more green space and all of that. But I also understand what Commissioner Meyer said. We need 55 plus apartments in this area and don't really have them. So the concept, I think, is a good one for some place in the township. Maybe not that spot. I'm not really even sure about that. Um, it, it, it does look huge in that area. And um, the density is way off what our rewrite has said so i'm not sure if if we're maybe going to the wrong first step and perhaps um meeting with some of the public first is a better let, way let me to do let that. me just say let me just say three things because i think it goes to the points that everybody's raising and it's certainly the way i'm viewing this and i've sat on both sides of this table i've been um, municipal solicitor in a number of municipalities throughout montgomery county and i've certainly represented a lot of developers over the years we're doing three things here. We're asking, we're asking for an opportunity to be heard. That's all we're asking for, it's just an opportunity to be heard. We're asking for an opportunity to be heard in a forum that you have set up that evaluates credible, that weighs the credibility of evidence and that comes to a final conclusion. We're only asking for an opportunity to participate in that process. That's all we're asking for. Secondly, to the, to the comment about having just written your ordinance, I understand that. I understand there's energy related to that. I understand it with a lot of time and energy went into that. Zoning ordinances are living documents and they change all the time. And the, the drafters of the Constitution spent a lot of time on that document and within a year or two realized they missed a couple of things and, and made some changes. And that's all we're asking for is an opportunity to create that process where you might come to the conclusion that there were a couple of things that you might change. And that brings me to my third point, which is that this matter remains discretionary throughout. <laughs> this, there isn't some sort of magic point that you're going to pass this evening where then your hands are tied. This question that we're putting before you remains a strictly legislative decision to the very end. It's like asking your congressman to please lower your taxes. <laughs> he doesn't even have to listen to you. You can throw your letter in the trash if he wants to. Or he could entertain it and take you right up to the nth hour and say, ah, no, I decided against it. We're willing to spend the time and the effort and the money to hold your hands through that process and to walk through the forest with you together to see at the end whether you come to the conclusion that what we're asking for just isn't in our interests, but it's in the interest of the community. That's going to be the decision we're asking you to make, and that's going to be the decision that you're called upon to make. You know that. If your conclusion at the end of that process is that we're only asking for this to line our own pockets, well, your answer is going to be no, <laughs> obviously. If your answer at the conclusion of that process is that the, what we're proposing is, in fact, in the best interest of this community, well, then you're going to vote yes. We're confident enough right now that the final conclusion is going to yield a yes from you that we're willing to spend the time and the energy and the money to participate in that process. We're only asking you for a shot. We're only asking you to, for, to give us an opportunity to be heard. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, uh, Mr. President? Mr. President? Um, Mr. Cools, I think uh, comparing the, the new zoning ordinance. <laughs> okay, that's going a little far. He's going to go to Commissioner Klein's head. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't think I, can, I don't think I can live with the, that. 
Um, speaking to the excellent points made by commissioners Rothman and Thompson, um, look, we, you know, we, live in the, we live in the real world. Your, your answer was honest. It's a, it's for fis the density is for fiscal reasons. This is a, you know, a, a for-profit developer, and the, it's, a, it's a business. You need to make money. Well, there's there, there's no, certain no, no, things I, that are necessary to make the project happen at all. Under, right, under, right. understood. You okay. paid a certain amount. Look, that's, that's the real world. Right. Along the same lines, you know, there, there are municipalities near us, one in particular, that's basically the land of no development. All you know, development is turned down at every, at, you know, at every possible turn, and their property taxes are quite literally double ours. Again, we live we live in the real world, um, but and again, this 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 speaks very directly to Commissioner Thompson's point. One thing, and I, and what I'm I'm telling you again, what to prepare for, uh, and I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. A responsible development, for me anyway, starts from the perspective, the street level perspective of the neighbor and the neighborhood. Folks, there are folks here who have heard me say this before and will hear me say this again. It's, you know, developers have, developers own property, they have rights. You have the right to, to come here and, and petition us and we have responsibilities to sort of see things through proper channels. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, as it happens, none of us have to, would have to live next door to this development, but there are people in this room who would. Uh, as I said, for me, it starts from the, uh, the vantage point of the neighbor and the neighborhood. So you're, I, I'm glad, it, I'm, I'm pleased by your response to Commissioner Thompson's uh, question about a willingness to compromise. But I, you know, again, prepare, prepare yourself for that to come up because ultimately it is the, the neighbors, the residents, and not commercial property owners or developers who send us here and whom we represent first and foremost. So just again, understand. prepare yourself accordingly. I understand. Thank you. I'm prepared. Preparation is important. <laughs> okay, any other comments or questions? Commissioner Thompson. Just uh, two more things. Um, going to what Commissioner Spiegelman said, I appreciate his comments about um, the development reflecting the character of the neighborhood. And um, when I look at this rendering, I have a really tough time seeing this as being an Abington development. This could be something in Center City, could be in Northern Liberties. Um, so that's one of the things I'm struggling with and that's one of the things that we will be talking about if this process moves forward. Um, also, um, this conversation is very focused on this particular process or this project, my, my bad. Um, but you're looking for a text amendment to um, the zoning code and the zoning code applies to a lot more locations than just your site. So if you're looking for us to amend the AO, um, that applies to a lot of areas across the township and I'm, I'm going to be asking you moving forward, if we go forward, what the impacts are to all of those areas, not and just your site. And we're going to have the answers for you. I mean, it, it, it is not an unforeseen question. I mean, clearly we drafted the ordinance with some uh, parameters related to distances from hospitals, distances from transportations. We'll, we'll be able to tell you as we move through this process and we have the hearings precisely which properties might be able to implement the provisions which might be there tomorrow that aren't there today. It's not an unforeseen question and we're gonna have full answers for you in the context of the upcoming public discussion on this, on this project. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from commissioners? If there are none, uh, Council, I think uh, it would be appropriate if we open it up for public comment at this time. I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, so at this time, I'll open it up for comments or questions from the public. Please adhere to our three-minute speaking rule. First, by coming up to the podium, stating your name and address for the record. And if you would, if uh, those who want to speak uh, not repeat what the previous speaker said, that would be greatly appreciated so we can streamline the amount of time that we have for questions. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for your service. Um, your name and address, please. My name is David Saplansky. I live at 2967 Lincoln Ave, Artsley, PA19038. Um, this is a very disturbing proposal. Uh, I've been an artist, I've been an educator, and I've, I'll try to keep this to three minutes. Um, I would kindly ask you, 
not to act on this zoning amendment. Do not let the developers rezone the township in their own interest. This will take away the residents. Um, well, right now, there aren't enough residents here, and I don't think they've been notified that this uh, meetings would go forward with a, uh, a rezoning uh, request, a rezoning amendment where there are already, there's already a, a zoning um, <coughs> ordinance in. Uh, I'm an educator. I've taken classes myself at the Y, and I'll go forward with why I'm saying this. Uh, there are always senior citizens, adults, and children attending programs at the Abington YMCA and a place for young people and handicapped citizens to work. There is such a diversity of courses and diversity of people at the Y that it is a pity that such progress will not continue. I would humbly su suggest that instead of these high-rise monstrosities, and I respect what Commissioner Zampone and Commissioner Bowman had the courage to say in, uh, Commissioner Klein, Thompson, and some of the others. Um, I would humbly su suggest that you put in a community center in the current Y uh, building, such as they have in Ardsley, where many different programs can take place. Uh, if the YMCA property is rezoned uh, to build high-rise facilities, it will affect the traffic density. I know uh, I have degrees in several areas, and Statistics can be skewed in various ways, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But when you're selling something, you put your best foot forward. And this is going to affect the aesthetics of Susquehanna Road and also Old York Road. There's nothing like it on there. And you drive down, all of a sudden, the Tower of Babel is up there. Please don't do this. Uh, there's already a zoning code. The zoning codes were put in with the idea to keep the quality of life, a suburban atmosphere in the township. In the almost quarter of a century I've been here, Abington has changed to resemble more of a city than a township. And the august body of commissioners is not obligated to act on this rezoning amendment. I hope with the quality of life of residents in mind, you'll refuse to accept an amendment for rezoning property now or any further meetings, I would squash it now. Don't let it get started. When something is, yes, I respect what was said earlier by the uh, uh, Commissioner Rothman, but that is not, I, I, have, I have to disagree. It is not the Commissioner's job to uh, entertain everything that is brought up on this podium. It is to represent the residents and the quality of life. And um, this is a tipping point. When you put in something so large, it, it's larger than anything I've seen on, the, on the, the distance of Old York Road or Susquehanna. It is just going to be the tipping point for the, aste the aesthetics in, in this township. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Name and address for the record, please, and three minutes speaking. Mr. President, uh, Rudolph DeMassa. Yes, Thank you. What is your first name, sir? Rudolph. Rudolph? <clears throat> yes, sir. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, I I'm not a neighbor in this area. I live on the other side of uh, a Valley Road, um, close to Holy Redeemer Hospital. Now, I'm trying to get my, my head wrapped around this whole uh, text amendment to the, to the zoning code. Um, and as I've come to understand, the, the code was revamped in large part due to the efforts of Commissioner Klein, uh, and it was done for many reasons. A lot of people. A lot of people, but yeah. you, I, I understand that you were you were there and you did a lot of work on it. Uh, it was just revamped last year. Um, now, as I understand it, and I'm making some assumptions, the request for this amendment would roughly double the current allowable density of AO zone properties in the township. One consideration that I would urge the board to take into account is that such a zoning change will impact, as I believe Commissioner Thompson pointed out, not only this site, but most, if not all, other sites within 2,000 feet 
of a hospital within this township. Uh, I'm concerned about what uses would be allowable on the ground floor if there's retail that's uh, proposed. And, and the height of this building is pretty imposing. There are neighbors in beautiful homes behind that proposed development. And they're going to be in the dark. Uh, if my assumptions are correct, I believe that citizens who are residential neighbors at this site, as well as some unwitting neighbors who are residential citizens located within 2,000 feet of any hospital, I'm not sure how we were defining hospital here, within this township will be impacted. And that's a good number of voters who will be potentially displeased with the specter of a multifamily, four, five, or six story housing development with retail potentially, literally in their backyards. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May, may I have his address, please? Oh, sorry, uh, sir. What was the address for the for your address, sir? Can we repeat your address, sir? I, I'm sorry, 717 Morden Road. That's in Meadowbrook. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from residents? Mm -hmm. Got it. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Herb McMahon. I'm from 1046 Huntington Road. I live uh, just behind, uh, or just south of the uh, funeral home, right behind Abington Pediatrics, the Pen, uh, 10 Pens building. The thing I'd like to say is uh, no zoning changes should come, uh, ever be approved without the knowledge, participation, and agreement of a majority of residents. And I think we have totally missed the boat. The first I've heard of this meeting was on Tuesday when I got an email from Ben Sanchez. So I've had two days notice. I think there would probably be even more people here if they didn't have to juggle childcare and work schedules and whatever else. But I, I just get the sense that there's this air of transparency that's been talked about. Why has it just come out on Tuesday? And when I got the email, it was characterized as unimportant. That it's a foregone conclusion, and it really is not that important to attend unless you want to get a first-hand glimpse of what's happening. And I think if you want to characterize it as unimportant, try telling BET or Mr. Culler that it's unimportant. And I'm a citizen. I have to disagree with you there, Mr. McMahon. I did not categorize it as unimportant. I, in fact, I encouraged people to come if they could. I got notice of it Friday, being on the agenda, got it out as fast as I could in my own personal life to people, and I didn't want people to feel obligated to come, especially in case they didn't have the opportunity to comment. I was just trying to save people time and elaborate that no action was going to be taken tonight, no final action was going to be taken tonight you would have plenty of time to comment along the way. So I would just like to clarify that. I was Okay, there was no attachments or no detail. The first detail I heard of this was Mr. Spiegelman's email from 557. I take issue with that too. I had an attachment and a link to information on the project. For all the stuff that John had, I didn't see the attachment. So I got the, <laughs> just to make a long story short, even if there was that information two days ago, I don't think that's adequate preparation, okay? I, I can't get through that much material and, and digest it. And so I got this information at 5.57 is when the email was put out. So I think I got it around 6.30. Between 6.30 and 7, I was speed reading through. I just think there's a rush to get this done. And I, I just feel as though my rights as a citizen are being railroaded. Okay, I'm living behind this. This is a monstrosity. I can't imagine anything more dense. I can't imagine anything more uh, imposing on the community. It's a beautiful community. I can't imagine anything worse. You're talking about 428 cars, uh, 225 units. And then there's surface parking too. So the f 428 could easily be 450 cars and I, I just can't even imagine I've been to the YMCA and it's difficult to get in and out 
I just can't even imagine what that area will look like. And uh, to Mr. Thompson's point, I could see that in Nor Northern Liberties, or I could see that in Center City. I don't think that that's what we want in this township. So for the, right, uh, for the, for the simple reason that I feel like my rights are being railroaded by such a quick motion here, I would like to say that I would recommend to the commissioners that the vote be no. I can see no reason why this was all, I was reading Mr. Culler's letter that was dated November 22nd. So I don't understand why you just found out about it on Friday and I found out about it on Tuesday and we're meeting here on Thursday. I, I just feel as though there should be time for more citizen input. I can I guarantee you that there are citizens that are in the area within <coughs> 2,000 feet of the hospital who have not been notified except for maybe at 557 this evening and there was an invitation to attend. I don't think there's anybody between the hours of like 6 p.m. and 7.30 that's going to be making this meeting. And I think when you talk about the text amendment, I have the concern of where else is it going to be applied in this township? I think that the commissioners have raised many great issues. I, I just, this, this to me is a heartache. And I feel as though if we allow the ship to leave the port, it's already a sailing. And I think that this is the time to stop it, vote no, and see what else we can come up with. Because this certainly isn't the proper <coughs> use for this location. I can see that there's, uh, a place where this might be appropriate, you know, Center City, Northern Liberties, some place where there's a lot more land. I'm going to wrap up. But I don't think it's at the corner of Susquehanna and 611. I just don't see it in this neighborhood. I think it's going to be an eyesore, and I would please recommend that the commissioners vote no on this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other comments from residents? Mr. President, Sorry. can I just address one thing? Because I, I know her very well. Just for the record, um, the reason that my email went out uh, so late was actually due to an internet problem that I was not aware of. Uh, so just for the record, that's why it was so last minute. That, 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 that right. sounds excuse like me. an excuse. No, and I, I'm, I know there's internet excuse, problems. Excuse me. Uh, so but, you and Commissioner Spiegelman can discuss this after the meeting. OK. OK. Commissioner Roth, you have a question? The just for point of order. Thank you. Commissioner Ruffin. I just wanted to respond to a comment that was made a little earlier. Um, in case it was uh, understood by anybody here that I don't feel that acting on behalf of the residents is the most important job of the commissioners, that is absolutely the number one uh, aspect and most important aspect of anybody sitting up here. And anyone that would want to dispute that with me, I'd be willing to sit down with that any commissioner, but I, I do think we agree on that point. What I'm saying is, as part of the process of getting the answers to the questions that almost every commissioner has set forth today, we need to have the opportunity to speak further with a developer. We need developers to answer our questions. If the developers come back with questions that you, the residents, who I applaud every single one of you that's here, whether you've spoken or not, to show your interest in our community is admirable. But if we don't get that information, we don't know what could happen next. We don't know the impact of what this uh, potential zoning amendment has on other properties in the township. What I'm saying is, and, and it may very well be, uh, the last speaker said you know, that he views this as monstrosity as, as some others did. It may very well be that <coughs> every one of us here agreed with that. It may be that we don't. But, number one, in order to potentially find uh, someone to utilize the space once the YMCA is gone, which will be happening, we need to learn more about what developers are considering, because most of the time anything that's going to be done there is a developer doing something, I and mean, when money does, doesn't fall out of the sky, and we need to go through a process. If we were to tell everybody that comes to us with a potential <coughs> zoning amendment uh, presentation to pound sand that we don't like it because some residents don't like it, we wouldn't get anywhere in the process. 
I admire every single one of you. I share your concerns, and I think we need to get some answers to those. It happens. We've had some recent uh, uh, proposed amendments come before us where the process is ongoing, and there are changes that have been made. There's concessions that have been made. It may go nowhere. It may be developed. None of us today can promise you what's going to be in front of you on uh, Susquehanna, on the corner of Susquehanna and Old York, at any point in the future. But what I'm saying and what I'm encouraging the other commissioners to do in letting the process go forward is partially to give you, the residents, the opportunity to speak directly to the people who know more information than those who just came today as part of what is really a formality. We could say no to them, and it may be that we say no when we, when we decide in a few moments. But from my perspective, and I just wanted to clarify because I believe that everybody that spoke made very good points, and I appreciate them, I'm not telling you that your voice is not being heard by me. I'm telling you that I believe we have to get some more information. And that's what I think is our job as the people behind the scenes that are gathering this information for you. Now, we can't share every piece of information with you if we don't have it yet. I would love it if you had all the information, but we have questions, as you saw. Commissioner Thompson you know, and Commissioner Vahey started out right away with some questions. We don't have that information to share with you, and once we get that, that's why Commissioner Spiegelman asked for dumbing it down for us so that we can answer very easy questions from the public accurately. That's what we want to do. That's what I want to do. So I applaud all of you for coming tonight, and, and I do really appreciate your thoughts, but I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not saying I'm in favor of the project by wanting this to move Mr. forward. Hoffman, Thank you. Can you wind it up? Thank you, sir. I'd like to get any more comments from uh, residents, uh, this young lady, and then Peter Saray. Yes. Right. How are you, sir? Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Name Good evening. and address. Uh, I'm Dr. Hellerslea. Uh, my property address is 1047 Huntington Road. Um, so mm -hmm. I um, live directly uh, behind this proposed building. Uh, I don't need to repeat, I think, what's already been said. I do want to acknowledge um, that I believe in good faith that you as commissioners are working on our behalf. I understand the position that you are in because you also have, an, have a bigger picture to look at, which is to uh, make this a sustainable, um, financially um, uh, beneficial uh, environment for all of us. And I am uh, appreciative of your desire to uh, keep an open mind. I think that's I think that's always a good way of keeping things discussions open. In this particular instance, we are looking at an increase in density, and from our perspective, there is no reason for that to be necessary if there are already ordinance that restrict that for our interest. So. I appreciate what you're already doing, Commissioner Klein, with uh, making sure that um, th those interests are uh, in line with our residents. And I, uh, like I said, appreciate that you uh, are working in all of our behalfs. And I would ask that you vote no tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Saray. Name and address for yes. the record, please. Good evening. Peter Saray, 1267 Bacchus Avenue, Abington. I'm asking uh, if there are any objective criteria for how many over 55 apartments are needed in a township the size of Abington. That's a good question. Two commissioners, I noticed, referenced that. I guess that would be a consideration, but are, is there any objective criteria about how many are needed? I don't know if anyone here can answer that. Uh, you want to give I it a think shot? Ms. Myers, do you, you brought it up that there's a need. What, how, how, how do you establish that? Um, can you name in Abingdon Township any 55 and over apartments, apartment complexes? I, 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 I wouldn't. No, I mean, their condo. I, um, but what, what, on what basis do you say that there's a shortage or not enough? In no. my own personal quest. Okay. <laughs> I got you. All right. 
that's good. It's good I think, enough. I, I, think, no, no, no. I think the conversation, no, you asked. I did. <laughs> no, 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 keep, there's no objective criteria, am I correct? I, um, excuse me, but can we move forward? I think the conversation okay. needs to be moved forward. That's all. Just the conversation. There's been many times mentioned tonight by the applicant, by the commissioners, that there will be resident meetings. Those are important meetings to have. Yeah, but I don't think we're going to answer your question. Tonight. But go ahead. Do you have any well, anything else? One, I think me? that the loss of the Y right. is a huge uh, loss for the community. Right. And this gentleman suggested some sort of community center where those activities could be duplicated. As you know, Mr. Luper, I was a coach. There was always a shortage of space for the ultimate game of soccer, but <laughs> other games as well. Um, the absence of the Y, because they do have those fields. Um, I noticed they also use the new fields at the, uh, I guess that's Penn State now. Um, I think it's going to be a real uh, loss to the community, and if that's a possibility, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, I feel that I think there's a misunderstanding here. I agree, Peggy. The YMCA is leaving Abington Township, and it's moving to a much bigger facility in Willow Grove. I'm aware of that. The section, there are sections of Abington Township that will be closer this, this new YMCA will be closer to them. Okay, sir. Name and address, please. Thank you, Mr. Saray. Yes, sir. My name is Christopher Germain. I live at 1092 Huntington Road, which is at the eastern boundary of the YMCA property. It's at the corner of Susquehanna and Huntington Roads. And I, uh, I thank you all for coming, for your input, for your work here for the township of Abington, but I would respectfully ask the board to deny the request of the developer because I just want to, I guess, restate the obvious that in my opinion, from what I see, from what my neighbors have said, this, this proposal does not pass the, any type of reasonable test of what the community really wants or needs. They may need some of the things that are brought up tonight, but this proposal specifically would redefine what the town of Abington is. I know how much time you've put into developing the township and the corner at the intersection of 611 and Susquehanna. This is at the very center of the town. And it will redefine what the town is, how the town looks, and everything all around it. Uh, think about the historic Abington Presbyterian Church. This project will dwarf Abington Presbyterian Church. It will dwarf my property, it will dwarf my neighbor's properties, and for this reason I ask for you to re reject the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other comments from residents? Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. You have heard tonight many of the people who just happened to find out at the last minute about this. Um, we have not spoken to anybody who's in favor of it. Um, the, the letter that's included in the, the link that we found um, is, was sent November 22nd to your township manager. It's absolutely difficult for me to believe that Mr. Sanchez... Was a hearing scheduled at that time? I'm sorry? Was a hearing scheduled at that time? It, it's difficult for me to believe... So it's difficult for me to listen okay. to you tell lies. This is my speaking Mr. Sanchez, time, Mr. Please, Sanchez. Please, thank you. Please, thank it's you. It's difficult for me to believe that Mr. Sanchez didn't get that information and didn't let his people know that that was happening and enlist from the people in his community their thoughts about it so that Number one, they could even come to this meeting, as, as you heard Mr. McMahon said, and be prepared. And number two, so that their questions could have been answered somewhat in advance and they wouldn't have to use their precious speaking time. While we're talking about that, this process that you're being asked to go forward with is positively 
Mr. Rothman, not how the best way to get information. At a planning commission meeting, often the developer gets to present for the entire time with planners going back and forth perhaps with them, and the residents whose concerns are so important, and you've agreed that they're important. I, I hope you all agree that they're important often are left at one time I was at a planning commission meeting where they didn't get asked to speak until one o'clock they'd all gone home they were in bed and the few of us that were left tried to hold up the fort there is or hold down the fort there is no reason that any developer asking for a zoning change should not be asked to give a full presentation to find out how many units there are in the township and what this need is, it should be presented here while you have leverage. Right now, you have leverage. They cannot go forward unless you let them. When you do let them without any of that information being handed to you by the developer, not at the expense of township personnel, when you do go forward, then all these people in this room have their property rights being challenged. If they're not there at the planning commission meeting, the planners think they don't care. If they're not there at the committee meeting, the committee members think they don't care. That doesn't mean they don't care. They just have very busy lives. And when you say go ahead, their property rights are being challenged. They do not get any financial profit from that. The builder gets so much that he doesn't care how many meetings there are. So this is not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is while you have the leverage, please use that leverage for the benefit of the people that you're serving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Are there any further comments from residents? Hi, my name is Bethany Lippa. I'm at 1056 Huntingdon Road and the pr proposed property would border my lot on two sides. And I had concerns particularly about the noise um, and also the traffic. Um, when they explained the traffic flow, it sounded as if the, there would be no left-hand turn from Susquehanna going towards 611, which means um, anyone exiting the property on that side would be turning right and likely cutting through Huntingdon Road. And that's a big issue currently, uh, but I foresee that increasing. Um, my biggest concern would be the loss of the having the resources of the community center at the YMCA. Um, so I guess if we're all naive in thinking that could be a possibility, we just would like to know that. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, D. Adcock, 1714 Brook Road. Um, which is just down Susquehanna from the project. Uh, really, it, you, know, you as a board of commissioners and representing us have like two things about this that are probably problematic, unless you want it to be, I mean, that's the township of Abington. If you want to make it the city of Abington, then this is a fine first step or maybe a second or third step. I really don't know what is in your heads or what you desire. <coughs> I moved into the township of Abington and probably prefer to keep it that way. Secondarily, or as actually primarily, um, <laughs> when something is so out of line with uh, zoning that was done not 20 years or 30 years ago, but 20 months ago or 10 months ago, and isn't even close, it's almost... Uh, it's almost insulting, quite honestly, to, uh, to the people who were involved in producing that zoning and the time that went involved in, into doing it. And then there's like one more problem on top of that is that as soon as you yield on something like this to this degree, and I'm the next developer that comes in here, and I say, oh, well, you just passed this thing and it was at least twice or three times what was allowed, I only want to be at one and a half or two times. How can you possibly not do it to me? And you've just provided a precedent for me to sue you, I suppose. Uh, so those are the three things that I kind of had on my mind from just being here for a little bit. Do you want Abington to be a township or a city? 
If you want it to be a city, go ahead. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other comments from residents? If there are none, uh, council, uh, you said we do not have to vote. However, in order to define what's the next step, how do we proceed? If the board is more comfortable taking a vote to give the manager direction to uh, move the, the matter forward, I think the board was very clear that uh, and directed the applicant, if it does move forward, it's not only going to go to planning, but the board is expecting there to be community meetings. So the applicant has that direction. I don't think a formal vote is necessary, but if the board feels more comfortable, that's perfectly fine. Again, the board's not taking any formal action tonight other than to allow the process to move forward. If that process does move forward, it would require this coming back to the board to authorize advertising. And if that was a successful request, then it would have to come back at least a third time for a formal hearing. Once authorization to advertise uh, goes through, only at that, at, at that time the notice requirements and the advertising requirements of the municipality's planning code would kick in and formal notifications would be sent out to all the neighbors. That being said, Mr. Cools was obviously instructed tonight that meetings with the residents in the area would be something the board was expecting to see as part of the presentation come February. Before we take any further action, I think Mr. Cool, why don't you uh, close up the presentation? I just want to restate that we understand that and we're asking you for um, a consensus. I don't know how you establish a consensus, frankly, without voting. So uh, we, do, we do need to hear from you. We do need to hear from this board as to whether a majority of this board is, is amenable to the notion that we move forward with this process. So we are asking you to do that. I will state for you that I'm asking you to do that subject to the condition that we'll have neighbors meetings. Uh, we'll make sure that the that individuals who reach out to us have contact numbers to call us even outside of established neighbors meetings. And we're certainly, uh, we've stated a number of times, the plan is to appear at your public planning commission meeting on the 23rd and to appear at your public code committee meeting on the 31st and then to come back to you again on February 8 with the product of those discussions with the product of the discussions with the neighbors and understanding that you're going to need very fleshy answers to all the issues that came up this evening including density and we're going to ask you on February 8 to authorize the advertisement of an ordinance which is the product of all that vetting but as for this evening we are asking you please to let us know that there's a majority of this board that is granting us a consensus to move forward with that process. I don't know how you do that outside of vote. And if, there, if the board is inclined to take a vote, I would uh, recommend that the motion be uh, to direct the manager to forward the, both the zoning text amendment and the zoning map change amendment to the planning commission and to circulate amongst township staff with the township solicitor. And to the uh, Commissioner Sanchez, as the commissioner of the ward, what is your yeah. pleasure, sir? I mean, I know this is going to be unpopular, but so that we're not in the murky netherland of an outright no with not all the facts before us and what, what we've heard, just a reaction to the limited information and presentation, I would rather, as I said from the start, invoke the public process so that we can have public meetings. Now everyone in this room knows that the Planning Commission is on February 23rd. You were asking, Ms. Lehman, for, on one hand, why didn't we have any public meetings? Well, we have to start the process somewhere. They are if not the place for Ms. Lehman. That's, that's Lehman. inaccurate. And be, Ms. Lehman, please. It's inaccurate. Cut, cut, to be able to speak. We, the that's what I mean. comment was taken sure this evening. There's no ability. Ms. 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 Lehman, if you don't stop talking, I will request that you be removed from the proceedings here. Thank you. Keep it up and you will be gone. I would Thank like you. to invoke the public process for rational discussion, public input, neighborhood meetings, and if it ultimately comes down, as the applicants indicated, that there is not a consensus or they decide to not press the issue or we decide we don't like it, then we don't like it at that time. But cutting it off without knowing what alternatives are and what other solutions are is not what I see as in the best interest of the township or the community. Therefore, I make the motion as uh, the solicitor indicated to send to the Planning Commission. Okay, is there, is there a second? Please, is there a second? I'm sorry. I was gonna actually ask a question, but we have to have a second first, so I'll second it so I can ask a question. Okay, thank you. Um, so I would like to honor what the, the uh, commissioner for the, for the ward 
is requesting here. My only question is, can we change the order of things and have the public meetings before the planning meeting, if that's a possibility, so that people in the area can express their opinion before you even get to that planning stage? We'll, we'll, we'll set up a meeting before, what is today, the 11th? And we're talking about a planning commission meeting on the 23rd. So that gives us 12 days. We'll, set up, we'll, we'll announce some meeting with the neighbors prior to the 23rd. So, I, this is going to put me to in a position well. where it's a rush, and then I'm going to be accused of announcing it at the 11th hour. So we're let not me gonna, ask. We're not going to have a meeting before the 23rd. Or push the planning back. How about the, plan, how about the February planning right, commission yes. so that there's time to have the public meetings before that and the, before the cycle? Well, with all, with all due respect, we have a lot of time here between now and March 8th. And if we push back the planning commission, there's other triggers throughout this February, process. February fine. Pardon? February fine. Okay. All right. We'll February do planning commission will be fine. Fine. Okay. So strike what I said earlier about the next meeting being the 23rd of the planning commission. Mr. Manfredi, do you have that planning commission meeting? So we. Uh, the, next, the February planning commission date. Mr. Panikal, I do not have Mr. it handy. Panikal, you have the date. Sorry. <laughs> Thank Mr. You. Sanchez, Commissioner Sanchez, why don't we work with you? I, I will commit to reaching out to you tomorrow, and we'll work with you toward uh, whatever avenue is appropriate in your mind to give the neighbors plenty of opportunity to be heard <coughs> at a private neighbors meeting prior to the planning commission. Is that satisfactory? Fantastic. Could you uh, include the township manager in that conversation? Absolutely. Of course. Thank you. But then don't pass no, it's, it. No, it's, 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 One more outburst, Ms. Lehman. Deputy Chief Malloy, could you please escort Ms. Lehman out of the proceeding, please? I'm tired of you disrupting a, a meeting that people are trying to get some resolution to, of an issue. Please leave the room. I want you to know that you're not explaining to the residents. I said please leave the room. I will. And please explain that they will Please leave. <coughs> please leave. Thank you. As you were saying. Mr. Chairman, we will reach out to uh, Mr. Manfredi, your township manager, and uh, we'll coordinate with Mr. Manfredi and with Commissioner Sanchez to conduct some avenue by which a public meeting can occur with the neighbors outside the context of your formal planning commission prior to the formal planning commission meeting in February, whenever that date is. It's the 27th. And 27th. 27th, okay. So we'll do that through Mr. Manfredi and Commissioner Sanchez. We'll have a meeting with the neighbors outside the formal context of the planning commission mm -hmm. then we'll go to the planning commission then we'll go to your committee then we'll come back to you with whatever the, pro the result of that discussion those discussions are and ask you to advertise after that could we document uh mr manfredi uh, to be clear it will not be a township meeting it will be an applicant's meeting and they're coordinating it with us so that we can disseminate information but it is an applicant's meeting not a township meeting with, with, open to the neighborhood. The neighborhood. Open to the neighborhood, but not conducted by the township. Right. Correct. Now, before we Please see, Ms. Lippa has a question. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse, Excuse me. I'll make, no, I'll make sure you know. Oh, okay. Excuse I'm me. I'm sorry. Don't, please, please don't interrupt. You'll get answers to whatever. I'm questions sorry. I called. I'll make sure you know. <laughs> Out of control Thank here. Um, before we, uh, I'll, I'll let Commissioner Hecker and, and Spiegelman ask questions. Then I want to ask Council for, because uh, there's a motion on the floor that was seconded, well, and it sounds like that has to be rescinded. The motion was just for the, to no. direct the manager to forward it to planning. It wasn't ad, it was not attached to a date, so the manager has instructions for, right. yeah. and okay. the applicant's agreeable to February. So that's okay. And, and we'll just reiterate that so everyone knows my understanding. 
that at this moment in time, there's been a motion in the second to direct me to send to the Planning Commission, but that will not occur until after such time that there have been sufficient neighborhood meetings conducted by the applicant with information disseminated to the public through our various means, Facebook and however else, but it will be an applicant meeting, not a township conducted meeting, prior to the February 27th as a target date, as a target date, but if things don't go, that, that may change, but that would come back here to you. <coughs> Thank you. Very well. You're very welcome. Commissioner Hathaway. Thank, Thank you, President Luther. I actually wanted to ask a clarifying question. I don't think Mr. Cools, you can answer this. Does the applicant, in fact, currently own the property? Have you closed on the property? The property is under agreement. The applicant is not title owner of the property. The okay. applicant is equitable owner of the property. So the, so the reason I ask that is I don't want there to be. I'm sorry, of all three parcels? All three parcels, of equitable all. owner. Under agreement on all three parcels not yet closed on understood so there's been a number of um, instances where the idea of a community center has been raised this evening and i think it's important for folks here and those who are going to watch this at home this isn't an open bidding process where somebody's taking applications for a use on a property if somebody who has purchased the property and is trying to figure out what to do with it under you know, un under the code that we have so we as a as a commissioner i would support the idea of us exploring other opportunities throughout the township for community recreation spaces but this is not an open parcel at the moment it is owned by a private developer one thing i want to say is it's not incorrect it, it, it we, we are under agreement and we're, we're in a binding agreement yep. which is only voidable by us should certain conditions not be satisfied. So Understood. This, is not a, this is not a property that's Which on the market today, it's just simply because it hasn't yet changed hands. And I'm just a little concerned about uh, this perhaps drifting a little too far in one direction. <coughs> what, I, what I'm hearing now is sufficient neighbors' meetings for a movable date at some future time that's yet to be you know, decided upon. I think what, what, we're, what we're saying is what we started by saying is we, we'd like very much to start this process with you and go to the Planning Commission on, on January 23rd. What you heard just recently was a concession that, okay, let's push it back to February so we can coordinate with Mr. Manfredi and Commissioner Sanchez to have a private, not township meeting, where the neighbors will have an opportunity to have some input outside the formal context of the Planning Commission. But we would like to do that. We would like to do that, and then we'd like to go to your Planning Commission in February. I'm a little uncomfortable with the notion that we're going to leave here potentially with a well, we're going to have sufficient neighbors' meetings to at some point in time in the future have somebody else decide when we might get on some planning commission, whenever. I'd like to have some, we'd like to have some idea of, of having started a process here. Mr. Coles, I think what I was saying is the target date was the February 27th, but maybe there would be more than one neighbors' meeting held by you. In other words, maybe one isn't enough. Maybe it had to be two. Maybe it had to be three. In, in order to generate enough information to answer the commissioner's questions as well as get the planning commission input before it comes back at a date in the future and i was just was um trying to make the point that it may not be a date certain it's a target date that if you're saying it would go to commissioner sanchez what if commissioner sanchez feels that the residents in his neighborhood uh, didn't have sufficient opportunity and they need to meet beyond the planning commission meeting february 27th that was my only point of opening that up it's not to say it's intended commissioner spiegel um thank you thank you very much commissioner hacker for making uh, your point regarding regarding ownership um with specific regard to the to the to the issue of of sufficient meetings uh, mr cools first of all look i i I'm going to certainly not mean to, you know, beat, beat up on you in any way. I really, I do appreciate your, your openness and your communication and your willingness. There was already a compromise regarding the, the uh, planning commission date. That's, that's a good thing to see, compromise. Um, but just for the record, I know you know this intellectually, but I, I guess I want to hear myself saying this to you and know that, and have the, the neighbors know that, that I said this to you, that we said this to you. Um, the, the, neighbor me, the neighbor meetings are an essential part, uh, uh, you know, the first and maybe most essential part of the vetting process the, of the question of is this, is, this, is this development, is this zoning change, and is this text amendment and the development behind it right for this location for Abington Township? That is, that is that's the question. 
the neighbor meetings and what happens there and the, and the compromises and that the neighbors are, are heard, heard and respected but also have agency and input. That is a crucial part of this process. So I, you know, just so, you know, I, I understand you have, there are dates, you have, you know, those trigger dates, target dates you need to meet. The, having those neighborhood meetings isn't, the, 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 the fact that they occur doesn't automatically mean that when we take the vote to, uh, to advertise, that that's going to that that's going to be a, a yes vote. It's really about what happens in those neighbor meetings. And again, I know you know that intellectually, but I need the neighbors need to know that too. There's there's nothing automatic. There's not like okay, well you've bought the ad the mo you've bought a, a yes vote on the motion to advertise by agreeing to the neighbors meetings. It's about what happens there at the neighbors yeah, meetings with a lot more folks than are yeah. are present here. Yeah, and and those neighbors and probably more than neighbors that are here this evening are going to be at that upcoming meeting and they're going to be telling you precisely what happened at those private meetings and how I'll, amen how amenable I'll, you were. I'll, how amenable I'll be there are. actually. I'll be there at those <laughs> neighbor meetings. Some of my some of the residents I represent will be there. So you'll see this beautiful face <laughs> yet again. Looking so forward. anyway, thank you for Okay. Mr. Uh, you have a motion and a second on the floor, and there is at some motion. point you'll we're, have to. We're, we're in the middle of a uh, vote here, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, you said we're okay with the motion that's on the floor. You have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, does anyone need it explained to them? Do you understand where you that's are? a motion made by Commissioner Sanchez, correct? Correct. correct. Right. All right. The motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Okay. So you're right, still, you're still on public comment. I'm just letting you know that you have a motion and second on the floor. That's all. We have to take public comment that on is the motion correct. now that we actually have a formal motion in front of us. That is correct. Okay. So then the gentleman. Yes, sir, you can speak. Yeah. Take your time, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to request a, uh, a clarification from council. I heard him state that the property was currently equitably owned by the purchaser. Um, uh, that is not legal title, as I understand. Correct. And what I would like to hear is whether the failure of this zoning proposal gives the developer the way out of the agreement of sale. I'm sure it does. That's a very good question. Good question. Okay. Um, Mr. Cool, did you want to answer that so we can move on briefly, if you could, please? Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to just first say, I'm not sure why title of this property became important. I don't, the, the applicant or anybody who asked for a rezoning doesn't have to have title to any property. Anybody could ask for a rezoning. I could ask for a rezoning of my neighbor's property tomorrow and be fully within my rights to stand before this Board of Commissioners and ask that a parcel of property be rezoned. It's not a zoning hearing board application. Good. It, it, and there are ways out of this agreement. It's a private agreement between two parties. There are any number of ways for the buyer to terminate the agreement prior to the expiration of the due diligence period. Okay. All right. It's, uh, yes, sir. Name and address, please. David Sapolansky, 2967 Lincoln Ave, Glenside, PA, 19038. I would say to the august body here and the people of Abington to please watch carefully the people that put this forward, that allow this process to go forward. Your vote in the voting booth to see who is commissioner. Keep your mind on this. I'm asking the commissioners to be on the right side of history and Abington has a wonderful history. And I look at that plaque there Abington Hall, 1839. I don't think the people back then were envisioning that we were going to change this township into a city. It walks like a duck. It looks like a duck. It is a duck. When you look at that and how big it is and how many people will be occupying it in the center of Abington, please do not allow this to happen. Vote no. I don't know about the ramifications of the second and so forth, but I would ask you, I know most of you have a reticence about that, just looking at it, please vote no on it now and just squash it. And they can go through another process trying to get through the, 
the zoning that Mr. Klein, uh, Commissioner Klein put forth rather than trying to rezone everything. We don't know the ramifications that are going to take place all over the township when people are trying to put more of these things in. I'm a senior myself, but I see the children having, uh, in, in the Y, and I know he owns it, but he'll probably sell it if he can't do something with it. And I would not encourage him. It's just about money, people. I worked for a big corporation once, and I know how things work. This is about money. It's not about the quality of life for Abington Township. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, are there any other public comments on the motion? Yes, sir. Can I have one second? Can I see okay, can you, wants Sir, to can you come to the microphone, please? Can you come to the microphone, please? I would just like the residents the opportunity to vote. Can you just raise your hand if you want a no vote? Just raise your hand and keep them up so everybody can see. I think the neighbors have spoken, and I, I hope you guys will take this into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? If there are none, uh, any comments before we vote from the commissioners? Okay. Hearing none, all, you've heard the motion. It's been properly seconded. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. 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 It seems like it was right down the middle. Can you? Yeah. We're going to do a hand vote. It would be helpful for the recording secretary if we see a show of hands. Okay. On, on show of hands, all those in favor, please indicate by a show of hands. Those opposed? I'm in favor. It's nine six. So the vote was eight seven. Okay. So the motion is approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Before we move on to our next agenda item, which is public safety, right. I'm going to ask for a brief intermission to let those who want to leave do so. <laughs> okay. If we may resume at this time, at this time I'd like to call on Commissioner Lori Shriver, Director of Public Safety. Thank you, Commissioner Luker. Uh, we have no formal agenda, but I do have an announcement this evening. The Abington Police Department will be rolling out a new program later this month. This program is called APAIR, and it stands for Abington Police Assisting in Recovery. It's a, it's a program for people seeking treatment for substance abuse. The commissioners will be receiving more information in tomorrow's packets about this program, and the public will be able to learn more about the program very soon. And we can also discuss it further at the next month's public safety meeting to answer other questions. Thank you. That's the end of our agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. At this time, Commissioner John Spiegelman, Director of Public Works. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Tonight, Public Works has two items on the agenda. Um, uh, the first is uh, PA1, which is to consider two motions. Uh, one is a motion to reject all bids submitted for the Ardsley Wildlife Sanctuary Project as advertised and submitted on December 20th, 2017, and reapprove the project and authorize rebidding of this project with a reduced scope, and a motion to approve the Ardsley Wildlife Sanctuary Project with a reduced scope and authorize advertisement of same. And I so move. Second. To move the second it, comments from commissioners. Staff, any from residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. And uh, the uh, second item is item uh, BOC01, um, which is a motion to adopt resolution number 2018 010, uh, approving a Township of Abington <coughs> Board of Commissioners policy, establishing a policy governing certain rules of order, board and committee agendas, public participation, and scope of committees, and I so move. Second. We move to second it. Comments from commissioners. 
Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, Richard Manfredi? Yeah, I just, since we haven't talked about this in detail, just want to touch on four things. Number one, um, on page four, apologize, there's a typo. It's meant to say not disrupt public meetings instead of disrupt public meetings. So, um, apologize, it kind of interesting. But in any event, just real quick, this really is meant to update and reaffirm uh, the policies developed in 2016, introduce and generally follow Robert's Rules of Order for Parliamentary Procedure. It um, introduces more, a more traditional agenda with unfinished business, new business, and it uh, sets the consent agenda, which allows you to combine routine yeah. or, or things for, for one vote. And then it also uh, makes clear that the scope of the code committee isn't just code enforcement, but the administrative code of the township that you know any ordinance would go before that committee. They're really the major changes. It, it also uh, formally adopts the changes we've made incrementally, such as the fiscal impact on the, on the agenda, the public bid requirements, and the general format. Um, you know, minor. Uh, it, it, it's really what this is. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any other comments? Commissioners or staff? Any from residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. And just for clarification, Mr. Luger, I apologize. You were quick on that one. Um, that was with the amendment uh, that Mr. Yes. Manfredi mentioned at the beginning. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Yes. Everybody's clear on that? <laughs> okay. Mr. President, that concludes the agenda of the Public Affairs Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Spiegelman. Vice President Klein, Commissioner of, or Director of the Finance Committee. Thank you, President Luker, and I'd like to call on the Township Treasurer, Jay Blumenthal, Blumenthal for the Treasurer's Report. Can speak. What am I this evening? <laughs> Can I tell you later? First of all, I want to make a, a, a comment about clarification that uh, a former speaker spoke at the podium, Ms. Uh, Layman did. I am required by law to have a deputy treasurer. I am required by law to have a deputy tax collector. And their deputy is supposed to act on my behalf. If I am sick or I can't do the job until somebody else is appointed. I just wanted to make that clear. And all due respect, uh, Mr. Blumenthal, I just wanted to ward off any debate at that time. So I understood. You're bringing it up at this time, is it more appropriate? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Now you want to hear my report? I'm not going to make this one brief. Please. Money's deposited by the various departments in the Republic Bank for the month of December. It was 1270020 Last year, 1528019 a decrease of 257999 year to date total for the year was 62,759762 prior year was 61,723829 with an increase of 1,035933 as for the monies transferred uh, for real estate taxes to the finance department for the month of December we deposited 69,064 compared to December 16 was 221361 with left a decrease of 152,297. Year to date, we collected 26,734,864. Balance to collect the 374,931. I want to make a comment about this. Probably out of the last 12 years that I've been here, it's always been 98% year to date collected and 2% left over, which is pretty much across the Montgomery County. This year we're at 99 and 1% left. Our lien list is much less, and I settle that with the county tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. That's my report. Thank you. Good job, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Blumenthal. FC1, motion to A, approve the November expenditure as previously circulated to the board in the amount of $4,019,912.35 in salaries and wages in the amount of $1,844,098.21. And B, authorize the proper officials to sign vouchers in payment of bills and contracts as they mature through the month of February 2018. And I so move. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Any from residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Roll call. Aye. Aye. Oh, roll call. Oh, sorry. No, it's roll call. Oh, this is roll call. Roll call. Roll call, roll call please. Commissioners Myers? Yes. 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 Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Any from residents? Any none? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. FC3, FC3, motion to approve the clearing fund and deferred revenue expense activity and petty cash balances for the month of November as previously circulated to the board. Clearing fund receipts and disbursements for the month of November 2017 were $20,624.31 and $20,061.49 respectively. Deferred revenue expense receipts and disbursements for the month of November 2017 were $8,781.71 and $208 respectively and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners, from staff, from residents. There is none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. FC4, motion to adopt resolution number 18-007, authorizing the finance director and his, his, her designate to invest township funds in any and all such financial institutions as permitted by the first class township, and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners or staff or residents? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. FC5, motion to adopt resolution number 18-009, authorizing the disposition of certain finance office records as set forth in Exhibit A, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners, staff, or residents? There are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes the Finance Committee's agenda. Thank you, Vice President Klein. This concludes our formal agenda for the evening. So at this time, I'll open the floor up for comments from the public. Name and address for the record, please. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. I've been waiting for that day for 13 years. <laughs> so um, I normally am escorted by a very handsome man that I'm married to tonight. I got a handsome man to escort me out twice. It's great. <laughs> so um, the finest, the very nice guys that we have for our police officers here. And thank you for allowing me back. Um, I, uh, so Mr. Blumenthal, I'll apologize for what might be a misunderstanding. Um, I will not apologize for the lack of transparency and to let you know that that very question I asked to have answered before I came to this meeting. And as per usual, I was denied the answer. So um, that, that's what has to change in this township. And um, there is certainly some concern about how many people are employed and how many would need to be employed in that office. So yeah, and if you want to no, no, talk no, no, about no, 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 it, no, no, if you no, want to no. talk about it later, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do so. This, I'm tired of this. No, I'm happy, I'm happy to talk about it, OK? stuff here. But there is a concern about that. I've mentioned that concern many times, and I would like to have it addressed. So if Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Manfredi, anybody would like to. Jay, please. Same escort. Okay. So um, the other thing that I, I just want to say is that what happened tonight is a travesty, but it is something that uh, the residents of Abington are beginning to learn, that it takes only eight votes. And so some of you who had uh, some very agitated uh, people call you or email you or ask you what the heck you were doing got to vote no, but it only takes eight to vote yes. And so the project can go through anyhow. And um, so we thank all of you who voted no. And I thank some of you who had hard questions and who brought up the things that the residents wanted to hear. The one thing that is missing is that 
the only leverage that you had about going forward and not attacking the residents in the process and costing them money and their time and everything else was to allow them to have all that information without any commitment to it going forward. And that was your only leverage on behalf of the residents you serve. So those of you who voted yes, just stabbed those residents in the back. It's really something that has to be thought about. Thank you to those who voted no. Thank you. Any other comments from residents? If there are none, we'll take closing comments from commissioners. We'll start with Commissioner Bowman. Uh, no comment tonight, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zappone. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Our first annual New Year's Eve party at the VFW was a huge success. We had over 120 residents uh, in attendance. So now at this time, the RZ Community Association, we're going to start planning our eight events for this year. And all our events are open to all township residents. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gillespie. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Public Works Department for that blizzard we had, or whatever they called it, and how they came. They picked up the trash. They, they shoveled, they, they plowed, they did whatever, and I think they did a fantastic job, and we should be very proud of our public, public works department. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Brady. On January 1st, when most of us were celebrating, the Stack family of Pleasant Avenue and Glenside Gardens were running away from the house, which was on fire. I want to thank the brave men and women of our fire department who came out and saved the day. The Stacks safe, left the house safe. No, no injuries, although substantial damage was uh, done to their property. Uh, I was so proud of our community, which has rallied around the Stack family. We've raised thousands of dollars to get them through this difficult time. The Stacks are deeply touched, and they're very grateful for everyone's support. So on behalf of the Stack family, I want to thank the residents of Africa Township, Glenside, Pennsylvania especially, and uh, I look forward to working for the community going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, relating directly to what uh, to Commissioner Vahey's comment. Um, this, as everyone knows, this holiday season and the period just after it was uh, extraordinarily busy for our 100% volunteer uh, Abington Fire Department. Um, and, you know, Commissioner Vahey mentioned the, the fire in Glenside Gardens. I know that Commissioner Brodsky is going to, you know, mention the, uh, the fire that occurred uh, in his ward uh, that, that took the house of a very close friends of mine. Um, but... Uh, and if, you know, there was also the, the fire at the Briner Chevrolet showroom. Um, we are extraordinarily fortunate to be protected uh, by this group of volunteers from right here in our community. Um, so I just want to give them a very special Happy New Year and uh, you know, express my profound gratitude, particularly to the Abington Fire Company right here in Ward 11, our neighbors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Hecker. Thank you, President Luker. I think given the lateness of the hour, I will uh, limit my comments to welcoming Commissioners Thompson and Behe. I look forward to working with both of you, and I appreciated your thoughtful comments and questions this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Commissioner Scheiber. No comment this evening. Thank you. Commissioner Myers. I'm not, I'm not accustomed to this seat, but I love it. Thank you, President Luker. Um, I am sitting in the seat that Commissioner Michael Gillespie held for many years. So um, I, do, I do appreciate that. And also in the interest of time, I will tell you about the PAL concert at the Keswick uh, featuring Real Diamond, who is a Neil Diamond tribute artist on uh, March 10th. I'll tell you about that later. Thank you. Commissioner Grotsky. Also, in the interest of time, I will keep my comments short. So, one, I want to echo what Commissioner Spiegelman had to say about our fire department. There was a tragedy in that a family lost their house over just after the Christmas holiday. And I want to appreciate not just the fire department for their hard work, but also Commissioner Spiegelman for stepping up and assisting the family. If anyone has any contributions or wants to make um, any types of donations, or there's, a, I think, a GoFundMe page that Commissioner Spiegelman set up. So that's appreciated to assist the family. It's greatly appreciated. And in connection with that, I also not only in addition to thanking the fire department, 
I'd like to also thank uh, the Public Works Department because I got a call afterwards that the road was still icy and there were still some dangerous conditions and I contacted Public Works and they were very right on top of it. They came out. I got a thank you call. Public Works did a great job in salting that road and getting that taken care of so that at least people who had to get to access to that property were there. So I appreciate that. It's a tragedy. Hopefully we have no more tragedies in Abington Township, no more fires, but it is appreciated for all those who stepped up and we'll go from there. Other than that, have a great night. Thank you, Commissioner Rothman. Thank you, President Luker. Um, I also want to echo the thank yous to the Public Works Department. Uh, I was receiving emails at random times, random locations, and uh, the department was so quickly uh, responsive that it was, uh, I was getting emails back thanking uh, our Public Works for fixing problems before I even was able to let people know that help was on the way. So thank you to everybody that uh, worked uh, over time in the past week or so. Uh, thank you to the fire department and the police department for keeping us safe during these difficult times with the difficult weather. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner DiPlacido. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, and I like my seat, too. Yeah, it's a really good view. <laughs> this, is, this is different. I was over there. Uh, wow. What a, what a start to this year. 8-7. This is going to be a fun one. Um, <laughs> Sure is. Uh, as always, when driving through Abington Township, please drive like your kids live here. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing this evening. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just re echoing some sentiments voiced here earlier about the fire department. Um, tonight, while we sat here, there was a viewing for Lieutenant Luterno from the uh, Philadelphia Fire Department. And uh, I just want to express my gratitude to all our first responders that are in here putting their lives on the line for us. Um, really appreciate it, and we're really glad to have your service. Um, also, we're going to be doing a park cleanup this uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. at the North Hills Park. Um, so if you want to come out and help us honor the memory of Dr. King, please uh, volunteer, help your community, and let's clean up our park. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner Klein. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little promoting for Commissioner Sanchez. Um, over the last couple months, um, the township has received two significant grants that will further um, expand the efforts that we put forth in the master bike plan and walkability, um, which will affect Commissioner Sanchez's, Commissioner De Placido's, Commissioner Rothman, and I believe Commissioner Brodsky's wards um, in making connections from Jenkintown to the Pennypack Trail and um, having worked on the master bike plan and sitting on the planning commission in the county. Um, it's great to see this, this, uh, these things coming to fruition. So I appreciate all the work that was done by staff, consultants, uh, the manager's office, and the commissioners that were involved. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Klein. In closing, I just want to uh, make one quick statement. Chief Livingood, if I'm not mistaken, this may be your last formal board meeting, correct? You are correct, Mr. President. After how many years, sir? Uh, 45. 45. Uh, Fortunately, you got 45 meetings. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that also applies to Fire Marshal Ken Clark. So thank you both, but we'll, we'll deal with that further down the road. Two more things. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King service Monday at the high school, the 15th at 12 noon. Uh, pastor Charles Kwan, who's a very distinguished uh, pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse. Although it's not in Abington, he's a dear friend and a mentor of many pastors in the area. And we're going to give a special recognition award to Mrs. Romaine Crawford, the uh, general manager of the Willow Grove Park. I, I was told to stop at Willow Grove Park. Don't say more. But uh, she's very outstanding, uh, very <coughs> dynamic personality, and I think it's uh, duly uh, uh, noted that we're going to honor her. Uh, lastly, uh, three commissioners, Commissioner Vahey, Spiegelman, and Brodsky, gave kudos to the fire department. I called um, Deputy Assistant Fire Marshal John Roy today and got some interesting statistics. Um, in the last two weeks since Christmas Day, the five fire companies have responded to 100 emergency calls, including four building fires with significant losses, 
the firefighters have logged a total of 1,600 hours of service in a two-week period of time, which that amount of hours typically is a, count of, is a monthly number. So uh, to the fire companies, to the fire chief, to the deputy fire chief, to all you guys who went out there, not to mention the cold that they endured those two weeks, I think it's, uh, it's just a dedication that um, I, I don't even know the words to say, but thank you to all, of, all the firefighters and EMS responders on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. So without further ado, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you for attending.